Well, welcome everybody as you come back, coming back from lunch. This is uh, Craig Resnick with ARC. Uh, our next, uh, next session is going to be Operational Resilience, a Critical Component of Digital Transformation and Sustainability. And, you know, I, I think that it's, uh, you know, certainly you've already seen a number of, uh, of great uh, presentations uh, at the forum on sustainability. And I, I would say we're, we're probably carrying this a little bit further as we're really adding the importance of operational resilience uh, on top of that. You know, because that really gets into things, whether it be, you know, cybersecurity, supply chain disruption, you know, safety, uh, dealing with extremes in weather or what have you, regulatory compliance, you know, above and beyond, you know, a lot of the t traditional things that you've seen, um, you know, in some of the previous presentations, you know. So, yes, of course, it involves anything to do with the carbon, net zero, ESG metrics. But it also means, you know, how are you as a company able to respond to the continuous change in consumer demands? How are you able to respond to all the supply chain issues that people have had to deal with? How are you dealing with issues related to being able to uh, lack of a workforce or being able to train a, a new and less, less experienced workforce when they when they come in um, with runaway inflation? How are you able to deal with that? You know, loss of supply of things such as such as energy based on, you know, geopolitical issues. And at the same time, the one thing that's interesting is sometimes using the words operational efficiency, because when we've done some surveys at ARC uh, recently regarding the whole issue of sustainability, and we said, what is, what is your most important issues regarding sustainability? And operational efficiency actually came out number one based on you know, sampling about, about 500 of our uh, end user uh, clients. And so in spite of being, you know, even slightly ahead of uh, government regulations and industry standards, but the thing is, is that ultimately, no matter what initiative you have, when it comes to manufacturing, you know, you can't take your eye off the fact that uh, operational efficiency is still going to be critical. Now, at the same time, the other, some of the other pressures that you're having is, besides issues of the fact that you want to make sure your company is operational resilient and has that image in the marketplace because it affects your ability to sell products to a certain type of consumer who finds the fact that they want to deal with companies that have the, the that are they're taking full um, you know me leveraging a, a sustainability and ESG and and have some of the best metrics uh, regarding that um, being able to adhere to all sort of government regulations you know whether it be for net zero or um, you know, be achieving certain goals by certain years. And another thing which we spend a lot of time is with the investor community and many of the equity analysts that are actually making, you know, adjusting some of their buy, sell and hold decisions based on which companies they perceive as, as being, you know, having the best uh, metrics when it regards to sustainability and ESG, but also that they feel are the most operationally resilient and can withstand problems with supply chain or employment, uh, for example, and, uh, and, and, and major climate disturbances. So ultimately, it's, it is a, being operationally resilient is a really a very, very good business. And one of the things that we find is, is that companies are looking into, you know, this is actually becoming part of their company brand. It's coming, you know, it's also helping again making sure that they've taken the right measures and steps to make sure ensure the validity and integrity of their supply chain. And it also helps with building an ecosystem of partners uh, who have, you know, like-minded partners. And even to the point as you're working with suppliers that also have, have similar values as far as for your, for your raw materials. And, you know, when we start looking at companies, the good news is, is that we've only found, you know, through our research that only about 9% of them really have, have no sustainability program at all, and about, about a quarter of them actually have now specific KPIs built into their business, um, you know, for sustainability and, and operational resilience, and about a little over a third, you know, do have at least at a minimum of targets and goals, and, and maybe a third of them are just at the point where it's in some of their strategies and maybe some pages on their website, but, uh, but they're at least moving in the right direction. But the good news is the sustainability activities are certainly, uh, you know, really very much underway. And, you know, as far as being able to have, you know, climate fr friendly, you know, products and services and, and the ability to make sure that, again, with it, when we're dealing with our suppliers, that we have standards that we deal with, that we only want to do business with suppliers that, again, have those similar, is of a similar like mind and goals. And they have their own ESG metrics, or for example, and net, net zero metrics. 
So those are the things that are certainly all, these activities are very, very much underway. But you know, there certainly remains a number of challenges regarding uh, operational resilience and sustainability and as far as being able to you know, get, support the right technologies and what are those technologies. We've talked a lot about those here uh, at the forum and, and putting in the right metrics and the ability to track performance so you can measure sustainability, for example, or operational resilience maybe in a fashion that you might be measuring something like an OEE, an overall equipment effectiveness. And, Maybe the idea is this is the time that we have maybe an overall sustainability effectiveness or an overall operational resilience effectiveness and have some sort of metrics and scorecard that people within the plants can, uh, can try to, you know, or, you know, re, you know, have some goals that they can try to try to reach. So, you know, the benefits are, of course, is, you know, we talked about how our operational excellence is so critical, but the idea is you're still, you know, consuming less energy. You're certainly going to be having increased quality product quality and uh, fewer reruns and you know you're you're going to be able to quicker meet your uh, net zero and ESG, ESG goals you're going to be more effective especially in times with a limited supply chain or uh, issues with the supply chain to do a better job of of managing the raw materials that you, that you have so uh, it, it's really a win-win situation for the business and it really helps you know in a um, in, an, in an economy where really the only certainty is is uncertainty and how to overcome that. Thank you